Hi everyone, well it's Pi Day again. Not the 14th of the 3rd, it's a Raspberry Pi Pico video again. But it's not about this one, it's about this one. Oh, look what arrived this morning. So it's a new Pi Pico is out. And what's different? Well, the astute among you will notice that. And that is a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth communication chip. So this is the Pi Pico W. And uh, it's just arrived. I got the email about it yesterday. It's just arrived today. If we look at it, it's uh, very similar. Some of the things that are on it. Um, there's not really much different apart from this uh, communications chip here or communications module. So this is quite exciting. So this means that we can put a little web server on this maybe or we can connect it to the internet. We can connect it to our Wi-Fi access point. As well as that, it also does Bluetooth. The Bluetooth isn't ready yet, but there is a micro Python implementation of the Wi-Fi available already. Now this doesn't use the standard UF2 file which I've used previously. Uh, this uses a new one which is made specifically for that. So let's just look at the screen for a couple of seconds. See this is the Pi Pico W. It was £5.90 so £6. That might be uh, the equivalent of six bucks. Who knows? I had to pay about eight altogether to get it delivered. That's still not bad for something with a Wi-Fi chip in it. Let's have a look at this. It says about putting the UF2 file on it. So let's do that to start with and see what happens. And then I'll boot up Sunny. So let me just connect that. So there's my Pi connected. So this is the specific UF2 file. So let's copy that on. Get it started. And let's try and connect this to Thunny. Okay, yes, yeah, so 1.119 for Raspberry Pi Pico W. All right, so that's connected to it. Uh, so, I mean, there's, let's see if there's anything on there as it stands. I shouldn't think there is. No, there's nothing on there. So it's interesting as to what's different with this. Um, based on a quick read, the only thing that I can see, the little LED on it is connected a different way. The Wi-Fi chip, this chip controls the LED for some reason. So that's slightly different. And I think some of the pins are obviously taken or the pins that were used for other things are taken for it to communicate to this uh, onboard chip as well. So we've got this document that Raspberry Pi have published connecting to the internet with Raspberry Pi Pico. So I've, I've collected that. It's got some C stuff in and it's got some uh, MicroPython stuff. So of course I'm going to steer clear of the C stuff. Apparently the Bluetooth bit isn't ready yet in this file, but uh, maybe they're working on that. So this is the onboard LED. So let's just try and get that working first. Let's see if we can do that. Just get rid of those. Let's see if I run that. Will it turn the LED on? Oh, I've got to save it too. Call it LED. Pi. All right, so that's turned the LED on. So that's relatively simple enough. Okay, so I've just taken this code here and uh, pasted this into Thunny. What this should do is go to a web page and get the contents of that web page. It won't display it like a web browser. It will just do the text from it. So let's see if we can get that working. So I've pasted it here back into Thunny. I've got Wi-Fi and password there, their local variables, which I've hidden up the top of the screen because I don't want to share that with you. Not that it would probably make a blind bit of difference. But here we go. Here's a, uh, a fictitious website that used to exist. Let's just try and run this and see what happens. Run. Okay, yeah, so it's pulled back a um, HTML file. The HTML file is probably going to be an error. That seems to have worked. Let's put some, let's try something else. Let's try um, Twitter and see whether that gives me a different result. Should do. Oh, <laughs> that gives me nothing. Oh, well, let's try another one. Uh, BBC.co. UK. Let's try that. Let's see if we can get that one to work. Oh, redirecting. 
Okay, so it's definitely pulling things off. I think that's because it should be HTTPS. Let's try again. Maybe that was the issue. Ah, uh, or is HTTPS not working? I noticed on the manual it did say that support's been added for redirect there. So maybe that's it. SSS verification is currently disabled. So maybe that's the problem. Let's try google.com. See whether that does something. Yeah, okay, so a different thing. So it's definitely going off. It's connected to my local Wi-Fi and it's beginning to pull things back. Obviously, you'd have to be really specific about what you wanted to pull it back. But that's an outbound web request working off this and it was dead simple to do. So all I did was imported the network module. I created this WLAN variable, which I don't know what that, that means, static interface network. That's obviously comes from that network. Anyway, that creates a new WLAN. Looks like you turn WLAN on and then you connect to it by giving it a Wi-Fi and a password. And then you just use your requests and off it goes and gets it. So dead simple to do that. So this has just been a few initial looks at it and you can see it's quite easy to set up and quite easy to get connected. Well, I don't know what we're gonna do with this. It probably could be loads of different applications to this now. We can let it see the outside world uh, as well as all the sensors. I mean, I think straight away you could do, let's say a temperature sensor, which appeared on a simple web page. Uh, quite exciting really. So anyway, this is the new Pipeco W with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth eventually. Hope you enjoyed this quick introduction video. Bye!